So if you want to slow this down a bit, one thing you could do is get reference to time dot delta time, which is the amount of time that has occurred since the last frame update. And then you add that time to a timer variable. And if that timer variable has been passed, then you can change the color. So let's go ahead and do that in our color change script. So we're going to create a variable called public float uh, time to change. And this variable will have a default value of 0.1f, which means 0.1 seconds represented as a float. Um, and because it's public, anyone in the inspector can change this. So if they want to change how often the change color occurs, all they need to do is go into the inspector here and that variable will show up as soon as our script has compiled. Now we're also going to need to keep track of how much time has occurred since the last change. So we can do a private float time since change. This of course is going to default to zero and we're making it private because this is an internal reference variable. We don't want anything else to be able to change this or to mess with it. We only want this update method to handle this time since change variable. So what we can do out here is add the delta time to the time since change. So time since change plus equals time dot delta time. So now every time update is run, which is many times per second, this is going to be incremented with however much time has occurred since the last update method. Um, now what we can do with that is we can see if the time since change is greater than or equal to time to change. And if so, then we can change the color. And if we change the color, then we want to reset the time since change. So we'll make that zero. And this is the basis of how you can do simple time-based effects inside of Unity. Whether that's determining the amount of time between a transition where you fade to black and load into another screen, or in this case, to randomly change its color. So let's go into the Unity editor here and wait for this variable to pop up. By the way, if you are working in Unity and you ever see red text down here, that's the error messages that are being given to you by Unity as it tries to compile scripts. You can check your error messages and find their spot in code by going over to the console, which is almost always at the bottom of your screen. And that would be one reason why variables like this may not refresh, because your uh, scripts have to properly compile before they will actually update and reserialize all their variables inside of the Unity editor. But if everything goes well, then you should see the time to change variable. So this is set to 0.1. Let's hit play and it should occur 10 times per second. So you could probably guesstimate that that's occurring about 10 times a second. But let's let's change the value here, which we can do, by the way, while the game is running. But if we change it while the game is running, it won't permanently change only until we stop the game. But we can change this value to say 0.2 and oh look at that it slows down to half the speed it's occurring five times a second and let's change it to one just so that we can really see that it is in fact running once per second and then if we want to make it something ridiculous again we can go back to 0.01 or 00001 but uh obviously it can only run so many times per second and you can only see so many frames per second with human eyes uh, if your value is ridiculous like this, then it will only update as many times as you have frames per second because your game just won't be able to handle more updates than that. So uh, let's stop the game and you can see the value goes back to how we had it set in the editor. So if you just want to test it out a, what a value would look like inside of your game while it's running, feel free to change it while it's running and you won't have to worry about permanently updating it inside of the editor. So hopefully that gives you a good instruction on how you can implement time-based functions inside of a mono behavior script inside of Unity and a good overview of how mono behaviors work and some of the Unity lifecycle events that you can hook into. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I have been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future Unity videos.